hiki ni kipindi cha Vuka Jordan kinacholetwa kwako na mtumishi wa Mungu askofu mkuu wa makanisa ya Grace Evangelical Church of Tanzania askofu Elibariki Sumbe akikuletea mafundisho ya neno la Mungu maombi unabii kufunguliwa shuhuda maombezi na injili iliyojaa nguvu za Mungu ishara na uponyaji kutoka leo from today mauti hakuna tena there's no death fungua kitabu cha Ibrania sura ya 12. Take your Bible, let's open the book of Hebrew chapter 12. Tutakwenda ule msari wa 14. We're going to read verse 14. Kama unaandika ujumbe wetu andika utakatifu na uombaji. Holiness and prayer. Biblia inaandika nasema tafuteni kwa bidii kuwa na amani na watu wote na huo utakatifu ambao hapana mtu atakaye muona Bwana asipokuwa nao. The Bible say do everything to have peace with everyone and that holiness that no one could see God without it. Mungu tunayemtumikia ni Mungu mtakatifu. The God that we serve is a holy. Siku zote Mungu ni mtakatifu. Always God is holy. Mungu aliyeziumba mbingu na nchi ni mtakatifu. The God who created heaven and earth is holy. Mungu aliyeumba wanadamu na viumbe vyote ni mtakatifu. The God who created humans and everything he is okay. holy. Taka Mungu atembee pamoja na wewe. If you want God to walk with you. Akufuate mahali ulipo. To follow you where you are. Ni lazima uwe mtakatifu. You must be holy. Hakuna shortcut. There is no shortcut. Mungu aliwaambia wana wa Israeli katika kitabu cha Walau sura ya 19 msari wa kwanza anasema iweni watakatifu kwa kuwa mimi bwana Mungu wenu ni mtakatifu in the book of leviticus that be holy as i am holy amina amen utakatifu ni moja ya msingi wa Mungu kwa kanisa holiness is one of the foundation in the church kwa sababu hiyo because of that Watu wengi wanaweza wakamwomba Mungu lakini kama si mtakatifu Mungu hawezi kuhangaika na majibu yako. Most people can pray to God but because they are not holy God doesn't deal with their prayers. Mungu anasikiliza maombi ya watakatifu. God listen to the prayers of holy people. Wanapoomba mbele zake. Once they pray before him. Mungu atusaidie. May God help us. Na watu wengi wakielewa misingi hii and if people would understand this foundation maisha yao yatabadilishwa kabisa. Their life will be changed. Zaburi sura ya 16 mstari ule wa 3. In the book of Psalm 16 verse 3. Anasema watakatifu walioko duniani hao ndio walio bora. He says the people that are in the world that are holy those are the better people. Ndio ninaopendezwa nao. Are the one that they uh, I'm pleased with. Watakatifu ndio wanaoweza kuruhusiwa kumwabudu Mungu katika roho na kweli. Only holy people that are allowed to re- to worship God in spirit. Maana ndani yao wana ushirika na Mungu. Because in them they have a connection or relationship with God. Ndio maana Mungu anasema kanya neno lake katika kitabu cha Yohana sura ile ya 4 na ule msari wa 23 na 24. That's why the book of John chapter 4 uh, 23 to 24 says Inasema wamwabuduo Mungu imewapasa kumwabudu katika roho na kweli. The people worship God uh, must worship him in spirit and truth. Maana Mungu ni roho. Because God is a spirit. Na Mungu anawatafuta watu wa mwabudu wanaomwabudu katika hiyo roho na kweli. And God is looking for the people that will worship him in that spirit. Kwa hiyo msingi wa Mungu uko kwenye utakatifu. So the source of the foundation of God is in the holiness. Ukitaka siku zote maisha yako yabadilishwe bila kujali mri wako, hakikisha uwe mtakatifu. If you want always God to change your life or yourself, unaupata, make sure you're holy. Unaupataje utakatifu? How do you become holy? Namba moja. First, mtu anamkiri Yesu Kristo kuwa bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yake, anasamehewa dhambi zake. A person must receive Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of his life. Kwa mengine unaziungama dhambi zako kama mwenye dhambi, kwa sababu Mungu anahitaji umpokee kama bwana na mwokozi wa maisha. Yako. Word, you confess your sin before Christ and agree that he is the Lord of Savior. Ukimpokea Yesu Kristo kuwa bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yako ndio mwanzo wa utakatifu kwanza kwenye moyo wako. Once you receive Jesus to be the Lord and Savior in your life, that's the beginning of you to be holy. Ndio maana Biblia inasema mtu akinipenda atalishika neno langu. That's why the Bible say whoever loves me is gonna hold on my words. Na baba yangu atampenda nasi tutakuja kukaa ndani yake na kujidhihirisha. 
and my father gonna love that person and I and my father will reveal ourselves to him the foundation of church is holiness and then once they are holy the behavior of God comes in them you see they have love and after love you see they are humble na kisha utaona Mungu akijidhihirisha ama akitembea pamoja na wao. And after you gonna see God revealing or walking with the people. Watu wanaweza kukutendea mabaya lakini wewe una upendo wa Mungu. People can wrong you but you just have the love of God in you. Upendo wa Mungu unakusababisha Mungu kuja kukupigania dhidi ya maadui zako. The love of God is a power that God gonna fight on your behalf before your enemy. Wangapi wanaelewa? How many people understand? Duniani humu tuna maadui wanadamu. In this world we have enemies people of God. Biblia inaeleza sema adui yako akiwa na njaa mpe chakula. Kwa hiyo inamaanisha Mungu anajua mwanadamu anao maadui. The Bible say when your enemy are hungry feed them. That means God know that human have enemies. Ambao wakati mwingine wana uchungu kwa ajili yako, kwa ajili ya familia yako, kwa ajili ya kazi yako, kwa ajili jinsi ulivyo tu. That sometimes they just bitter about your work, about your family, about yourself. Just because they are jealous. Wanaweza wakainuka wakakunena lolote tu ni mradi wa kuharibia sifa ya maisha yako. They can just rise against you and speak bad words just to destroy your life. Na ukiwa na upendo, and once you have love, Mungu atakupa hekima namna kutembea na hao maadui wanaokujaribu kukusonga. God will give you a wisdom on how to walk with the enemy that are approaching you. Maana Mungu pamoja na upendo ana nguvu. Because God beside uh, love he have power. Biblia inasema Mungu upendo wake una nguvu kuliko mauti. The Bible says, says the love of god has power than death. Kwa hiyo wale wanaokunenea mauti, wanaokutakia mabaya, wanaokuwazia mabaya, upendo wa Mungu ukiwa ndani yako utakufundisha namna kushinda mbinu za mauti zinazonenwa juu yako. So once you have the love of Christ gonna teach you on how to overcome the enemy that are announcing bad things over your life. Please say amen if you understand. Mungu anaweza kukutaarifu. God may inform you. Juu ya maadui wanaokaa kinyume na wewe. About the enemy that are rising against you. Ili wapigwe kiraisi so that they may be punished do not have any word against them mema. just wish good to Mungu them wa kuwaonya, waonye, wasame, tena. if god allow you to warn them warn them but forgive them and love them ndipo utaona mioyo yao itahukumiwa then you see they have to be judged the judgment that will never leave them kila kitu chao kama ni huduma kama ni karama kama ni vipawa vitastaki mahali hapo everything that they have if it's call if it's power, if it's uh, a talent and gift they will be just blocked vitasimama they will be just stopped hata wao watashangaa kwa nini vitu vyetu vinasimama even they will be surprised why kama vimesimama if they are stuck hakuna in, kitu kinaenda there is nothing that is going on wewe sio tofauti na miriam ambaye aliwekwa nje ya marago that is not different from miriam that was thrown out of the temple kwa nini why na yeye ni mtumishi and he was a servant of god ulimi wake aliutumia kumpiga mwenye haki because he used the tongue to hit a, a person of god kila aliyekupiga atahukumiwa wapaka atakuja kutubu kwako. Sema amina kama unanielewa. Mwambie mwanzako mbingu ndio zinazotawala wanadamu. Kila aliyekuwazia mabaya usikukucha hukumu inarudi kwao. Waliokutegea mauti, waliokutegea ajali, waliokutegea mabaya, mabaya yatondolewa leo katika jina la Yesu. The trap they put, the trap of death, the trap of accidents Today is be rebuked by Jesus name. Sema amina kama unanielewa. Say amen if you understand. Unajua tabia ya asili? You know the character of taboos. Ngacha nikwambia tabia ya asili hivyo. Let me tell you the character of uh, taboos how Amba it is. Ambaye pia mwili wa Kristo. That is uh, disturbing the blood of Christ. Tabia ya asili the behavior of our, our cultures Mungu anapojifunua kukufundisha When God reveals himself to teach you Na unaona kabisa Mungu anasema na roho yako And you see God is talking to your heart Badala kusema eh Mungu nisameni mimi Mungu nisameni mimi Mungu nisaidie nitengeneze hapa matoke yake wewe unajihesabia haki unachukua hayo maneno That behavior when you have it you when you hear God talking instead of saying God is me that you're talking to please help me help me help me to change within me instead you take that words unachukua hayo maneno you take those words unachukua hayo mafundisho you take those teaching kama ni kiongozi if it's your na, uh, kama ni mtakatifu if you're a right uh, una, holy person unakwenda kufundisha wengine kana kwamba wengine ndio wana matatizo hayo kumbe wewe umekataa kuponywa 
you go and teach others as if they have that problem, but you don't have that problem. But by doing that is that you are re- refusing the deliverance of God. Ndipo hapo mwili wa Kristo unapoharibiwa. By that the body of Christ being destroyed. Ana tabia hii anaichukua anaenda kufundisha kana kwamba ndio wale wanaowafundisha ndio wana tabia hiyo. Na wale wanaweza wakapona ama wakawaharibu mara mbili zaidi kwa sababu yeye amekubali kuharibika. Hiyo ndio tabia ya asili kwa sababu ilianza na roho ya usengenyaji ni jiwe la kuzimu kuwa mwili wa Kristo. That kind of person once you refuse to understand that is God talking to you and you call that teaching you go teach others as, as if they the one that did wrong you may help them or destroy them because already you are destroyed in you because you refuse to accept that instead you saw that is for other people matokeo yake the outcome watu wanaomba kwa makundi kwa makundi Mungu atokezi People pray group by group by God don't Sabu, repeat. Sababu akiangalia namna hii. When he look them all like this. Anawaona wamebeba mawe ya kuzimu kwa ajili ya kuvuruga mwili wa Kristo. He sees them carrying the stone of hell to destroy the body of Christ. Kwa hiyo anakuta Mungu hawezi kutokezea. Matoke yake yanabaki ni maneno watu wanafarijiana na maandiko matakatifu lakini mwenye maandiko hatokezei kujifunua kwa watu wake. Uh, after that it's just be gonna be words people gonna encourage each other by the, the scriptures it's gonna be just empty scriptures because the owner of the scripture do not reveal himself jambo hili likatufundishe ili kurudi kwenye msingi may this thing teach us to go back to the foundation mungu yu karibu nasi kuliko pumzi yako god is very closer than your uh, your air that you breathe lakini hivyo ni baadhi ya vitu ambavyo mungu ametupa ili kuj kumbusha ili Mungu awe pamoja nasi. But these are the few things that God give us to remind ourselves this morning. Asante kwa kunisikiliza Mungu akubariki sana. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Kutoka sasa. From this moment. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Jesus Christ's name. Wewe uliofungiwa jiwe kwenye moyo wako. The one that you have a rock uliofungiwa jiwe kwa njia ya kichawi. The one that you are bondage. Mawe ya kuzimu. Rocks from hell. Yaliyo kuharibu moyo wako. That they have destroyed your heart. Yaliyo kupishanisha na Mungu wako. That they have bring conflict between you and God. Yaliyo haribu kipawa chako. That they have destroyed your talent and your gift. Yaliyo haribu kipawa chako. That they have destroyed your talent and your gift. Yaliyo haribu huduma yako. That they have destroyed your calling. Mawe ya kuzimu. Rocks from hell. Mawe ya majini na mapepo. Rocks of demon and evil spirits. Yaliharibu fahamu wako. They have destroyed your mindset. Kwa jina la Yesu Kristo ali hai. In Jesus Christ the living God. Na kwa muru atia watawa. I command you release these people. Atia tua zao. Release their steps. Kila mahali ulikoguswa ufahamu wako wa kiroho na adui shetani. Anywhere that you, the devil has touched your mindset. Nina kuamuru sasa achilia huo fahamu. I command you right now release that mindset. Achilia huo fahamu. Release that mindset. Achilia huo fahamu. Release that mindset. Achilia huo moyo. Release that heart. Kwa jina la Yesu Kristo. In Jesus Christ name. Get out. Toka. Ninaona mtu ambaye utumishi wako umeshushwa chini. I see someone that your calling has been lowered down. Unawito ndani yako. You have a calling within Lakini umeshushwa na maadui kwa sababu ulikaliwa vikao vya kusengenywa. But your calling has been lowered down because your enemies have set meeting to uh, gossip yes. about you. Yes. Na wakuumiza moyo sana. And they really hurt your heart. Moyo wako umevunjika mpaka unasema ya nini kuwa Mkristo? Your heart is broken and you're wondering why do I have to be a Christian? Mimi nilifikiri kwa Kristo ndio kuzuri kumbe huku ndio kubaya. I thought in Christianity is good but it's actually really bad. Biblia nasema kila silaha iliyofanyika juu yako leo inaharibiwa. The Bible says any weapon that is formed against you today has been destroyed. Silaha ya masengenyo na iharibu kwa jina la Yesu. God, the gossip weapon today has been destroyed. Achilia watu wao. Release these people. Achilia kipawa chake. Release the gifts and talents. Get out! Taka! Kuna watu wanafunguliwa kutoka roho ya maneno. Uliponenewa yale maneno, tayari ile roho ilikuja kukaa kuguzuia. Kutoka hapo hukusogea hatua yako. There are people that have been set free because of the spirit of words. When they utter horrible uh, bad words to you, you, c- you could never move. Ukawa mtu wa kukata tamaa. You are a person that you're giving up. 
Ukawa mtu wa kuchoka hata sangine kanisani hauendi. You became very tired you don't even go to church. Na shetani anakuambia utaenda wapi? And the devil is telling you where are you going to go? Where are you going? Where are you going to go? Mwambie naniachilie sasa hivi kwa jina la Yesu. Tell devil release me now in Jesus name. Mwambie niachilie sasa hivi kwa jina la Yesu. Tell him now release me now in Jesus name. Mwambie achilie kipawa chako. Tell him to release your gifts and talents. Mwambie achilie karama na huduma. Tell him to release your gifts. Ah, achilia. Release. Yes. Dio. Achilia. Release. Yes. Shetani anaachilia watu wa Mungu. The devil is releasing the people of God. Bwana wa kanisa yuko hapa. The Lord of church is here. Anapoachilia na mkongo wako unaponywa. When you are released your, your back is been Anachilia, healed. Anaachilia kinaponywa. Once you release your waist has been healed. Jesus. Yes so. Bwana ananiambia mkono wangu si mfupi hata nisiweze kuwafungua. The Lord is telling me my hand is not short that I will not be able to set them free. Kila aliyefungwa. Anyone that is in bondage. Aliyefungwa fahamu yake. Your mind that is in bondage. Aliyefungwa baraka zake. Your blessings are in bondage. Aliyefungwa hatua zake. Your steps are in bondage. Unafunguliwa sasa hivi. You are set free right now. Unafunguliwa sasa hivi. You are set free right now. Unafunguliwa wewe. You are set free come on you are set free right now. Fire. cha kwenye ulimwengu wa roho kila wakati huoni njia yako kwenye ulimwengu wa roho unaona unatembea porini unaona unatembea mbugani hata ujuu utafika wapi na kuamuru sasa haya kichaa kwenye ulimwengu wa roho achilia huyo mtu achilia watu haya kichaa achilia watu ndio mighty name of Jesus achilia watu ndio mighty name of Jesus haya kichaa haya kichaa ili kuachilia kwenye ulimwengu wa roho kwa jina la Yesu. In Jesus name. Yes. Dio. Inaachilia. It's been released. Inaachiliwa na wako huru. You are set free. Jesus. Yesu. Jesus. Yesu. Shetani achilia watu wa Mungu. Devil leave the people of God. Achilia mitaji yao. Leave the gifts and their talents. Achilia uchumi wao. Leave their finances. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Kwa jina la Yesu. Ilo jini limekaa kwenye kifua chako. There's a demon that is sitting in your chest. Mungu anaambia kama hii jini liko kwenye kifua cha mtu huyu. God is telling me to rebuke yes. that demon. Hilo jini limekaa kwenye kifua muda mrefu. It's been there for a long time. Papa jini ondoka. You demon get out of her. Taweka kwenye kifua cha mtu huyu. Disappear from her chest. Taweka kwenye kifua chake. Disappear from their chest. Papa jini. You demon. Taweka kwenye kifua chake. Disappear from their chest. Achilia kifua chake. Release a chest. Kwa jina la Yesu. In Jesus name. Out. Shaka. Kila falme usiotokana na Mungu aliye hai unavunjika. Any kingdom that is not of God is been broken. Unavunjika sasa hivi. Breaking right now. Kwa jina la Yesu. In Jesus name. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Namshukuru Mungu kunifanya kuwa hai mpaka siku ya leo. Namshukuru Mungu kuitambua hii madhabahu. Pia namshukuru Mungu kunipa uhai mimi na familia yangu kwa sababu kama sio Mungu kunileta kwenye madhabahu hii nisinge kuwepo siku ya leo. Ni wenyewe wapendwa mnaelewa jinsi nilivyokuja. Hata hiyo siku ya Jumapili nafika hapa nikasema Mungu usinipite, Mungu nitendee. Yaani nilikuwa nalia namwambia Mungu naomba unitendee chochote kile, yani kikubwa kufunguliwa. Yaani nifunguliwe kwa sababu biashara tulikuwa tuna biashara zikafungwa yani zikafungwa vipi yani tulikuwa na mgawa mkubwa tu baadaye ilitokea uchonganishi mambo ya kibiashara najua fanya biashara mnaelewa mkiwa majirani mnafanya biashara moja kwa hiyo ilipotokea hivyo mwenye nyumba akasema muhame na tunaishi ndani alafu nje tunafanya biashara uende ukatafute sehemu nyingine ya kuishi na sehemu ya biashara tofauti na hapo ni kuaibika na ndio kilichonikuta namshukuru Mungu Nimefika kwenye madhabahu hii imenilea ndani ya hilo tatizo la kiuchumi alafu ndani ya hilo tatizo tena la mume wangu yani mume wangu akawa amepata kazi kipindi hicho hicho ambacho tumeambiwa tuhame akapata kazi kafika kakaa wiki mbili kazini nikapigiwa simu na engineer kwamba mume wako ana matatizo haoni mchana wala usiku unalielewa ile nikamwambia najua kwamba uaga haoni usiku ila la mchana hilo ndo unaniambia sielewi 
akasema sasa kwa sababu tunafahamiana basi ataendelea kufanya kazi ila afanye jitiada muende hospitali kubwa lakini aliviona hali inaendelea akawaza kwamba ampeleke hospitali yani taratibu za hospitali zifanyike na tukawasiliana na daktari akasema ni pressure ya macho uh, dada pendo he is explaining her testimony goes she came here last month as you can see she's pregnant is with her husband and their first son when she came here it was very difficult she didn't even have a transportation she had to put uh, some home stuff for a loan and then she got that and she got a help to arrive in arusha she stayed here for almost five days and they didn't have nothing they had a business which was closed down and her husband got job on the same time but also in the home that they were staying the owner of the house uh, fired them so they were supposed to look for a new place to live but also the husband got job and he worked for two weeks before he could see in the day and he couldn't see in the night but after getting the job he lose his sight even in the day he couldn't see the um, testimony is going on amen karibu endelea kwa hiyo mume wako akawa haoni hata mchana au eh alikuwa haoni mchana wala usiku ndio kwa hiyo wakaambiwa jitahidini muende hospitali eh last hivyo basi itabidi arudi apumzike nyumbani namshukuru Mungu kwa kweli amenifanyia kitu kikubwa baada ya kufika madhabahu hii siku ile ile ambayo maombi yamefanyika baada ya ibada nilikuwa na wazee wa kanisa wakampigia simu akasema kwamba anaona amen amen this is a testimony because the day that uh, Pendo was receiving prayer here on behalf of her husband also because the husband couldn't see as i said before because even the boss who told him to do everything possible to go to the hospital because otherwise he couldn't work anymore so when he, uh, the wife was here receiving prayer for herself and on behalf of the husband the same afternoon they they called the husband back in dodoma and he confessed that he could see the same sunday Bishop just told him this same day your husband gonna see and that is what happened on the same day and we can see the husband is seeing even now glory to God Nataka watu waone kile ambacho nilikuwa nimesema I wish people to see what I said back on that day I love to mthibitisha Mungu na kile ambacho kilikuwa kinatokea wakati huo kule Dodoma So we can see what happened on that Sunday but also the same day the husband was set free and he got back his sight na hivi ndivyo ilivyokuwa. Kuna mwanamke anatoka Dodoma. Mume wake macho yake hayaoni. A woman from Dodoma and her husband eyes he cannot see. Wewe. Wewe unaitwa nani? Upendo. Upendo. Kwa nini mume wako haoni? Wamepima juzi wamesema ana pressure ya macho. Ana wiki tatu tangia ameanza kazi. Alipoanza kazi tu ndo akawa haoni lakini siku za nyuma alikuwa aoni usiku lakini saa hizi mpaka mchana aoni Yuko wapi? Yuko Dodoma, Tanrod. Mume wako ana moyo mzuri sana. Your husband has been Maadui wakamuonea huivu. Na wewe hukua na nguvu katika ulimwengu wa roho ya kumlinda. Bibi asema mwanamke atamlinda mume wake. Ni kweli. Wanawake wana nguvu ya kulinda wanaume sio kwa kiwivu kijicho kwa maombi the woman has power to protect the man na wewe kazi zako zimeharibika na kazi zako zimeharibika all her work has been destroyed na uja kuja hapa nimeweka bondi printer ndio nimepata na uja kuja nikasema nda pia uka uka mbele Mungu anaambia kuna mtu mume wake ni kipofu Mungu anakuona kuliko kuliko unavyofikiri umekaa huko rafiki yako anakuwa God can see you more than you can ever think. This woman is testifying that when her husband started working uh, three weeks ago, she, he started to become blind all of a sudden. He could not see in the night, but now he cannot even see in the daytime. And of course, she lost everything as well in her business. Sasa tunaenda kumwombea mume wake. Now we are going to pray for her husband. Nakataa roho ya mauti ambayo imetumwa. 
We cancel the spirit of death that has been sent to them. Ndio maana ilianza kuua vitu vyao vinavyoonekana. That's why it started killing their things, their belongings. Baba neema na rehema zako ni nyingi sana. For the grace and your mercy are many. Angalia mwanamke huyu ametoka Dodoma hata nauli hana. Look upon this woman, she does not even have fear, she's coming from Dodoma. Amekimbilia kuja madhabahuni pa. She ran to your altar, O oh Lord. Ninatubu kwa ajili yao. I repent on their behalf. Natubu kwa ajili ya mume wake. I repent on behalf of her husband. Na mlango wote uliokuwa umefungwa. And any door that was closed. Leo unaondoa magugu bwana. Today you are taking out weeds. Naondoa magugu ya upofu. You are taking away weeds. Naondoa magugu ya malepisi. Revenge weeds. Katika jina la Yesu. In Jesus name. Na kutoka sasa. And from this moment. Namfungua mwanaume huyu. I set this man free. Kwa niaba ya mke wake. On the behalf of her. Nafungua macho yake. I open their eyes. Na Toma nguvu ya kumfungua. I send power to re- release power from Tanga kwenye ulimwengu wa roho na ulimwengu wa I separate them in the spiritual realm. The evil spirit now is manifesting in this world. Wewe ni nani? Yesu anamjua. Jesus knows. Usimfungue. Umeelewa? Do you understand? Angalia kama naambia usimfungue maana yake wamemfunga. Akawa kipofu. Atakapofunguliwa na we kila kitu tafunguliwa. Do you understand when they say that do not set her free it's because they know that they have bound her Sio upofu wa kiroho ni upofu wa macho mwanaume haoni Anasaidia watu hatutaki Hamtaki Ah ah Silikwambia moyo wa mume wake ni mzuri sana I told you the husband's heart is very nice The man has a good heart Sasa kwa nini mmempofusha macho Huyu biashara imefungwa na yeye asifanye kazi wakae tu awe maskini ndugu amewakataa kila eneo awaeleweki yani yani ndio tumefurahi ndio mnafurahi ndio furaha yenu sasa leo Yesu anangua hayo magugu huyu mwanamke kielele kwa nini amekuja huku wacha awe kielele maana ni wa Yesu mwachia huyu na shughuli zao mwachia na yule mume wake aone macho waziwazi na kazi zao msiwafuate tena na baraka zao msiziguse tena release her release her husband release everything that belongs to them and never go back to them no sema moja moja sema mbili mbele sema tatu na mwisho sema ene amen sikiliza lo una simu nayo nayo tukimaliza ibada hapo Unasimama hapo kishujaa unampigia mume wako mwambia lo unaona maana unaona amen The man, the man of God is telling this woman as soon as the service is finished to call her husband and ask do you see because you can see Mungu amewafungua God has set you free Tarehe 5 Tarehe 5 mwezi wa 12 5th December Tunazindua kanisa jipya Mmoja wa watu watakao shuhudia siku hiyo baada ya kuzindua kanisa ni wewe na mume wako The first people who will come after inauguration of our new church to testify will be you wakati namwombea naona macho yake yamefunguka ushuhuda unaendelea baada maombi nikakwambia ukitoka hapa piga simu mume wako atakuwa anaona amina tulipiga simu tulipiga simu na wazee wa kanisa amina na akasema kwamba nimepona akasema nimepona amina amen oh yesu makofu kabisa kama unaelewa clap for jesus because on the same day pendo called her husband Together with the deacons of the church and he confessed that he could see. Na mume wangu mwenyewe ni huyu hapa. Huyu hapa. Hebu mume mtu hebu tuambie jina lako kamili bwana na kile ambacho kimetokea. Karibu. Nashukuru. Kwa majina naitwa Rusadi Mlelo. Ndio. Tatizo lilianza mwaka 2012. Ndio. Tarehe 18 nilipigiwa simu baada tu ya ibada. Baada ya ibada sasa baada ya ibada. Nikapigiwa simu na mzee wa kanisa. Ndio. Nikaulizwa swali. Ndio ulikuwa una tatizo la kuona ndio sasa hivi hilo tatizo bado lipo ndio cha ajabu nilichokiona ninapoambiwa vile ndio ghafla nikakuta macho yamefunguka ndio ghafla macho yamefunguka hallelujah glory to god amen miss amlelo here is also confessing that on the 14th of that month on the afternoon one of the church member called him and asked him you had a problem you lost your sight how about now can you see He say an amazing thing happened because the same time he received that question immediately he could see. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Kwa nani kakuponya namna hiyo rafiki? Maana si tuko huko mbali, wewe uko Dodoma, mke wako yuko huko, nani kakuponya? 
Ni Yesu Kristo. Ni Yesu Jesus who did that. 